Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to episode number four in our Minecraft Bedrock series. Uh, we're going to be following up after our tour from last week by going through some of the things that we're going to work on here at the Skeleton Farm. You can see I now have a bit of a slime issue here. And it's because I got rid of the moss carpet that I had here before and the reason I had that was because slimes can spawn here and they fill the room up but I'm I'm cleaning up this room and I'm going to be moving the floor so that's why I removed all the carpet and for now I'm just collecting slime balls as uh, I get them because I can use them for what we're doing so I had a quite a bit of things that I did in our tour regarding what we're going to be working on and the skeleton farm was the first one i wanted to focus on i broke that down into all the things that i need to put on it one thing uh, that we need to make is an on off switch for the farm which is just going to be done pretty simply by putting in some redstone to light the room up to make it so that the spawner won't actually spawn skeletons slimes slimes everywhere but I'm just going to go through the list of other things that I'm going to be working on. And uh, we're going to get some of it done today. And then the other focus we're going to be doing in this video is I want to do an enchantment tutorial. Um, some of the people that play on the realm are fairly new to Minecraft. And when you've been playing for a while, sometimes you forget that the some things that like you ha take as second nature are things that people still don't quite know how they work. So I'm gonna do a tutorial that follows how to set up an enchantment table, how to use the enchantments, how to use grindstone, how to use the um, anvil, all those things to kind of just give a general overview and make it so people can make their own enchants if they follow along. But to go through the list of the other things that we wanna work on here, um, I want to put in a manual kill chamber. So right now I have that here. It's it's not very clean and I want to move it to a new spot to make it uh, a much nicer room. The I want to add in an item collection system that sorts out the items that the skeletons drop and also collects the XP and delivers it to the player, both when we're at the manual section here, which is pretty simple because you're just going to be standing here killing them. You just want to collect the XP, which is fine. Uh, but then also when I have the auto killing system, I want to have that XP delivered to the player and the items still sorted, which means I'm going to have to sort out arrows and bones uh, and then also the non stackable. So it'll be a pretty complicated sorting system. Um, I want to also have probably a system that takes the um, arrows and the bones and doors at least a, a handful of them in shulker boxes so that when people need to grab bones or arrows from the farm they can just grab a whole shulker box and go and i'll probably just set it up so that when you take one you just put in a new shulker box so that it can get reloaded but that i'll figure out as i get it set up i want to add in a system to uh the, the auto system is going to have a few different stages. We're going to have a way for the skeletons to be redirected into a system that converts them into strays so that I can uh, collect the slowness arrows from them. We're going to have a system that redirects them just into a normal kill, killing system. Though honestly, I may just... I may just have it so that that's the same system and then they just redirect which way they go that way i get either regular arrows or slowness arrows not quite sure with that yet uh, and i also want to have it so that it can redirect them into a system where they will aside from a place where i can just manually kill them i want to have another place where they're killed and they um, create skulk and puts it into a cube that'll be pretty complicated as well because i want to make it so that once we have um, skulk filled to the point where we can't produce anymore. I want to be able to detect that with redstone and then have them redirected back into just the regular killing chamber. So that way, if I AFK to create skulk to collect later, um, they then go back into the normal kill chamber. Be an interesting redstone challenge, but we'll get that done. 
And then the other systems we have to have are just doing redecorations in the room. We want to clean up the walls so that they're uh, a little nicer looking, first of all, and then figure out how we want to decorate the place. And then uh, working on slime proofing the area and making it just a little more hospitable for people that are using it. So those are all the things we're going to be working on. For today, I want to start by doing some work on cleaning up this room. I put ladders to, to get up to the top um, everywhere. And what I've been working on is the ceiling first. I'm just going to take it down to a bare stone room so I have a template to work on. And then, so what I've been doing, I just have a grid I can go over here. I'm digging the ceiling up to an even level and replacing any blocks that are in the ceiling that are not stone with stone and making it look a little nicer. Our ceiling is done now, gone through and evened it out. All the uh, different blocks, like the granite and the dirt and the diorite and the andesite that were exposed are replaced with stone, just to give it a, a clean look before I'm finished um, removing everything so that I have a, a kind of a blank template to work with. Uh, I'm not quite sure how I'm going to decorate yet. I'm still, I'm still thinking about that, but... I'm going to continue moving, removing the scaffolding and then moving the walls down. I'm widening the room a little bit. When we make the final area at the bottom where we're going to have the actual farm, it'll be a small area that's all within range to keep the farm active so that we can keep the spawner going um, wherever the player is in the room for the manual kill chamber. But I'm probably going to make that chamber a little smaller because I want it to be simpler so that you can just stand there, do your enchanting business and, and stuff like that. So um, that'll get adjusted where it is. And the pipe piping for the drop is going to get adjusted accordingly and uh, all that good stuff. But I just want to have a, a clean area to work with. I'm going to leave the amethyst up here. I do have plans <coughs> in the future to automate this using pistons and uh, daylight sensors, but I don't know which parts I wanna use yet, so I'm just gonna leave it all hanging out, but I'm gonna dig out the rest of the geode around it as I dig down. So basically all I'm doing now is I'm digging down another layer, making sure the wall's all good, um, and then when I get to certain spots, there are like caves that were in the wall, and so if, if I look through here, there used to be, probably can't see it anymore, but there used to be a cave that extended down through there um, a pr pretty good bit. I filled it in with some extra granite and stone, and then same down here. Um, behind here, there's actually a, still a really big cave, but I just made a wall out of granite, and then I'm going to put a stone wall um, right in front of that to make like the inside of the room here, and then we'll have a place to dig against and everything will look much nicer. So it's a very tedious process to get it cleaned up, but I think it's a nice, uh, important step to take because having a uh, template to work off of that's nice and uniform is makes it much easier in the long run. So sometimes doing that tedious work is really important. So I will come back once we have that all done and we'll start working on building the manual kill chamber. That is the part I want to get finished today before I get into doing our uh, enchantment tutorial that we wanted to make today. I am back at our skeleton farm. It's been a couple of days since I recorded the last clip and I just had some medical issues with my back that I'm still struggling through, but I wanted to record some more i did a lot of work in that time because i was able to just keep plugging away at it but here's a big reveal of where we're at i think it's pretty impressive sized room when i first built this skeleton farm it was early on in the server's time and i didn't have a lot of tools i didn't have a lot of supplies so it was kind of um you know thrown together so now i'm working on some other things i expanded out the area around it for one and dug it out 
the, the slowest part of this whole process was turning these walls into stone and deep slate. And I missed a couple of spots. There's a redstone right there. I might leave it. Um, but, but I think it looks pretty cool. Uh, it gives a pretty neat effect. But the, the main area where we're going to end up building out where the, the player uses the farm will be decorated a little more. It's going to be much smaller. But I just kind of wanted a big space to work with so that redstone can go out and 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 all that right now i'm working on replacing the blocks that i had built this with with tinted glass because i want to be able to see inside to see what's happening i had a lot of like um andesite and and diorite that i was marking stuff with before so now i replaced the entire floor under the farm with tinted glass and i'm working on the the chute here and a couple little more spots and just the frame and then it'll all be done but I'm waiting on amethyst to do that I'm probably gonna have to automate this these amethyst crystals up here to get enough but that's another time project for another time what I do want to show you right now is something I think is really cool since they changed the mob spawning uh, mechanics in the past, if I wanted to light up this farm, it's like it's thundering in Minecraft. If I wanted to light up this farm to turn it off, I had to put a bunch of lights in different places so that I could make sure that nothing would spawn. Now, all I need is that one light down there, right underneath the spawner, under the water. And let's see if I can get down there safely. If I turn this back off, it's not going to be perfect right now because there's still some openings. But you can see I immediately have skeletons spawning again. So it'll be very easy for me to run a redstone line that turns the switch on and off. So all we have to do is connect it to that light. Now I could also put that light on the side of the farm or on the top of the farm because they would all still provide enough light to block it, I'm pretty sure. So I may move the redstone light to the side just so that it's an easier redstone line once I get figure out where the rest of my redstone mechanics are. Another thing I wanna work on is currently, skeletons come down here and they come through this part and they kind of sit right here because they're waiting to go into the water stream to get lifted up. Um, I want to see if I can figure out a better way to do that. I know putting some ice down will help, uh, and things like that. And it's not really a big issue because what happens is, is when the farm's on, the next skeleton coming down pushes the skeleton in, he goes up, and then we end up with one sitting here kind of waiting until he wanders into the water. Not a big deal because it just keeps going. Um, this spot right here at the bottom of this water chute is far enough away from that spawner that when the spawner looks to see if it can spawn more skeletons, it doesn't see this one. And so it can, it, it'll keep spawning more continuously. So that's fine, but I'm, you know, I'm, I like to figure things out and I might be able to figure out a better way to have these skeletons go through. I, I've had a couple of ideas of just different blocks to try to, to see if I can get them to slide through much more efficiently. Uh, I even had some, more concepts where I was thinking I could rig it up so that there is a clock down here that has a piston that pushes them through, but I think that's kind of silly. Um, uh, overkill and loud. So I probably won't do that. What we're going to do right now, I'm going to leave this where it is. We'll come back, we'll do some more work on it and move on to the next step. But um, I had wanted to do for the second half of this video, making a little bit of an enchanting tutorial. Um, for people who are newer to Minecraft, because there's a lot of people that haven't played until Bedrock has started to get more popular. And I even have a couple of people on my realm that don't really know Minecraft too well. And so I wanted to show some of the basics, some of the stuff that we th consider to be basics, but are actually pretty complicated. And they're just things that we've, uh, we, us more experienced players, Take for granted we've been doing it for so long so i am going to head out to my guardian farm to do that tutorial because that's all set up and i have a very good source of xp out there and so it'll make things a lot easier so we'll come back once we're over there and ready to start
After a detour, dropping off some stuff in my storeroom, I am over here at my guardian farm. You may recognize it if you've watched some of my other episodes. But this is where I'm going to show off how to do the enchanting. There's a couple of different steps to it, and, it's, and it can be confusing. But I'm going to try to go through just the basics of how to do enchanting um, while we're here. So first of all is the enchanting table. The enchanting table to craft it. see it uses four obsidian two diamonds and a book once you have one you place it down you can then put in a tool let me see if i can grab one out of here just to demonstrate it and you need some lapis and you use that to do an enchant so now there's three different things in the enchantment table when you put in lapis and whatever you want to enchant. And you can enchant weapons, you can enchant tools, you can enchant armor, you can enchant books. Um, I think that's it. But it, there's three different things listed here when you, when you want to enchant. In order to enchant, other than the lapis and the item, you need to have experience levels. Right now I have 37 levels. Now I'm up to 39. So a good source of experience is, is pretty useful when you're doing enchanting, but you can also just use the experience you collect as you play. And one of the quirks of the realm that we play on is because you we have keep inventory on, the XP doesn't disappear when you die. So you can you probably build up a lot of levels pretty quick, even without an XP, XP farm. But... Once you have at least 30 levels, you can do a max enchant. The max level enchant requires you to have 30 levels, but it doesn't use all 30 levels. So to do a max level enchant, you have to have the enchantment table set up in a certain way. And there's lots of different layouts you can do, but you need to have 15 bookshelves that are in the ring around this enchanting table that is two blocks away and you need to make sure there's nothing blocking them so you can't even put a torch in here so like if i had a torch there and then i put it in um i can't enchant all the way to level 30 because that torch is blocking one of the bookshelves if i remove it and i put this back in you can see now this says 30. and so for the way this was read is for one enchanting level you can get a enchantment that is level six, but it will only cost the one enchanting level. And it'll also consume one piece of lapis and it will give you at least on breaking one. Under the next one, you use up two enchantment levels and two lapis lazuli. You'll get on breaking two and the question mark means you might get other enchants, but you'll definitely get on breaking two and it'll be a level 14 enchant. Now, the higher this number, the better the enchant. And so you can see that for this level three, you use three enchantment levels and three lapis lazuli, and you get a level 30 enchant. Level 30 is the maximum enchant you can get. So if you're trying to get enchants that are really high level, you want to get a level 30. Like, for example, we put in a tool. That's where you can get things like unbreaking three, efficiency, sharpness, the tools, the enchantments you might be looking for. The other thing you can do, and I don't have any in here, let me grab one, is that you can enchant books. And then when you put the book in, you will get an enchant. So let's go ahead and do one. For there, we got a protection three. This one is smite four. Projectile projection four. And you can see there, we got more than one enchant. And I wanted to do that specifically so I could show you how it works when you have more than one enchant on a book. But we'll save that just for a minute. And so that's how you do the enchants on tools. Now let's say you enchant a tool. Let's do a, a level one enchant. I'm gonna actually, no, I can do a level one with just one piece of lapis. So I got fire aspect one on this diamond sword and I don't want fire aspect. If you go to the grindstone where it says repair and disenchant, put it in, take it back out. The enchantment comes off, you get the tool back and you, and you 
might have seen an, an experience orb popped out and you got a little bit of your experience back. So that's a way where you can disenchant things. That also works with books. So if you have a book and you're like, I don't want that enchant, you can get your book back. And so one thing you could do if you have a large amount of levels is you could keep enchanting books, keeping only the ones you want and disenchant the ones you don't, and then you'd get the books. So there's a couple of different ways that you should know about different tools. And let me grab some. Hope I already have it out. Let's make a couple of things in here just to demonstrate. Um, I want to cut on a little bit of wood. Crafting table. So. Um, let's make a couple of diamond pickaxes. Because that's a pretty common one that people want to get. So we'll do three of them. So a couple different ways you could get a pickaxe to have the enchanter looking for. So let's say I already have one in here that is unbreaking three efficiency four. Let's say you want an efficiency five diamond pick because efficiency five is the highest level. One thing you could do is you could get a book that has efficiency four and I don't have one. So I, I, I'm, I could probably try for one to demonstrate it, but I don't have one. I should have gotten one ready. Didn't, but let's do one more book. Maybe we'll get lucky. Nope. But so you can get an efficiency four book. And if you were to combine this pick with an efficiency four book, you would get efficiency five because when you combine two efficiency fours, it goes up to the next level. The other thing you could do, and this is much easier, but it costs the diamonds is you could make another tool. So now we have an, a fortune three unbreaking three efficiency four, and we have an unbreaking three efficiency four. So when you want to combine the two enchanted items, you use the anvil. And so you take the, the first tool and put it in, take a second tool. It'll show you how much it's going to cost to do the enchantment here. It's just one level. And this will show you the results. So you can see this is fortune three, unbreaking three, efficiency four, fortune three and unbreaking three are already max level enchants. So they can't go any higher. So when I add unbreaking three to unbreaking three, I just get unbreaking three. But that's fine. When I add efficiency four and efficiency four, I get efficiency five. At this point, if that's the final enchant you want to do, then you can name this whatever you want. Oops. Let's just name it fortune pick. And then you can take it out. And now you have a fortune three unbreaking three efficiency five fortune pick. Now, if you wanted to have Another enchant added to that, you could do that um, by using a book or by adding another another uh, uh, enchantment. Now let me do this. Now if you look and you take this tool and you add this one, it's not going to let you combine it because this tool already has max level on breaking and efficiency, and this tool would not add anything to it. So it's not going to let you combine the enchants. Now if you did it the other way around, it would because this tool can be upgraded by using the enchants on this tool to get here. You wouldn't do that because what it would give you is the same pick as this one for 14 levels and it would consume this diamond pick. So it would be silly to do that, but that's just something to make sure you notice when you put the picks in, make sure you put the one that you are your tool in and then the tool that you want to add to it here. Just an important note. So I'm actually, I don't need this pick. Let's get rid of it. We'll put that away. I do leave some, some things here in case people need them while they're here enchanting. Now the caveat about the guardian farm is that anybody can use it come over and turn it on. It's going to kill the guardians, but because of the tridents are placed by me, anybody else who's on in the game, won't be able to get XP from the farm unless I'm online. So that's a, that's a little bit of a downside, but that's why we have many different XP farms. And uh, we, you know, I can show you how to build your own if you get to a point where you wanna do that for those people that are on my realm. And for anybody else that's playing, um, you don't need to have a, an XP farm that's as crazy as this one. Any system that gives you XP is fine.
for the purposes of this. Okay, so we covered how the enchantment table works, covered how the anvil works, we covered how the grindstone works. Um, I think that that's all the different things you need. Oh, last one I wanted to cover. The tool station. I think it's called a smithing station. Look at that, make sure. So I'm calling it the right thing. Why does it not show up? Oh, there it is. Okay. Yeah, smithing table. Smithing table is crafted by using two iron ingots, four planks. It's also a villager table, which if you put it near a villager, will turn them into... I think it's a weapon smith, not positive, but so you may find them in some villages too. But this is used to upgrade gear. So let's grab. This is how we, cra we craft netherite ingots with four scrap and four gold. So we're gonna grab one of those. I have made a bunch of smithing templates these are made by, by finding, you find one in a Bastion Remnants, and then once you have one, you can... Duplicate them using a piece of netherrack and diamonds. So I made a whole bunch of them. But that's how you make them, in case you need them. And so in order to take a tool up to netherite level, you put that in. And then you put the netherite ingot. And so now this pick will become a netherite fortune pick. Now, one thing I would note is that you don't want to do that until you have your enchants done. Because once you want to combine two picks in uh, an anvil, they have to be the same material. So even if this had an enchant I could add, I couldn't add it to this pick because this one is netherite and this one is diamond. Now, this also works if you're doing like iron picks or gold picks or stone picks or even wood picks it's just you can do you you can do it on all those but you know typically you do diamond and go to netherite because they have the highest durability so that's the that's the picks you're going to use in the end but there are purposes for making other chance on a different levels but so that's how you get to the point where you can make a, a netherite tool same applies to armor there's lots of different armors um and chance so like this one has five different enchants and some of them are some of them are harder to get some of them are easier to get but they're all um all ones that you can get I, I encourage you to look at the wiki to see the different types of enchants you can just go to the wiki and look up the piece of armor you're trying to enchant it'll show you all the different enchants you can get but that will allow you to make armor you want tools you want and weapons that you want pretty simply let me know in the comments if you have any questions or anything I didn't cover. But I think that that covers all the things you would need to know on how to do enchants in Minecraft. I realized the one basic uh, part of enchanting that I didn't show that's pretty self-explanatory, but I just wanted to show you how I do it. Um, and that is using XP to mend your tools. So I'd make a large amount of tools because I, uh, I have mending on all of them and I'm not going to lose them unless I break them, uh, by using them beyond their durability. But I like to spend a lot of time doing digging. And so I have quite a bit of picks that I use for that purpose. And so what I do is once I have on some over where I have, uh, some, XP set up and and again I have it set up so that I can just AFK and get the XP. So this is the way I do it. Um there are pretty simple ways to set up farms that'll do this, albeit at some slower rates or faster rates depending on what kind of farm you build. But you can see I have a decent amount of XP just flowing in every few seconds. So what I do is I have a stalker box that is my toolbox and Currently, I am highlighted over this slot here. So I know that any tool that's in that slot is going to gain experience. And so I just kind of sit here. I put a tool in that slot that needs repaired. And I wait for it to be fully repaired. 
and then I will put it away and I will grab my next tool. And these are the five left that I need to repair. And so then typically I'll do this and then I will uh, work on editing a video or I will work on uh, something else or I'll watch a TV show or I'll get a snack, whatever I need to do because it takes a little bit of time. And then once it's repaired, I put it away and I move to the next tool and I keep going until everything is repaired. It takes for all these different tools, if I've used them all up, it probably takes about an hour to do the whole thing. And then I'm good to go with each one of these pickaxes. I think it's, I think it's 1500 durability for a diamond pick. And I think it goes up to 2200 on a netherite pick, which means you can use it 2200 times before it breaks. But with unbreaking three, that means that you have, every time you use a pick, you have a, a slightly, uh, you have a reduced chance of actually using the durability and it ends up lasting three times as long. Um, so I think it works out to be about 5,000 durability on another right pick with unbreaking three. And so I have 12 of those picks so I can mine 60,000 blocks before I have to come back and repair my pick, which is pretty epic. And you can see this one's almost done. So as soon as it's done, I will swap it out for the next tool that needs to be repaired and we can move on. The other thing is, is I, these are some other things that you can enchant that some people don't realize you can. I have a flint and steel that has unbreaking and mending on it. So it's the last flint and steel I'll ever have to make. I have a shield the same way. I have shears. Now the shears actually have silk touch um, and uh, efficiency five on, so I can use them to cut down leaves super fast. You don't need the silk touch. I don't even know what silk touch does. I think it's... I think Maybe you need silk touch to cut down cobwebs, but I'm not sure with bedrock if that's true. And then I have a crossbow that I made fully enchanted up that I've never used because I don't really like the crossbow mechanics. But that's that's all the different tools I have. I keep uh, an extra couple of shovels in here. I have three shovels just because sometimes I like to dig large amounts of sand, so I like to have an extra one to do. But um, I usually just keep one of my axes in, uh, in my toolbox and one of them on me. I keep a shovel on me, I keep a pick on me, and then I fill the rest of the box up. Looks like I actually need to make... Oh no, I just didn't put that one back. So these three picks get repaired and go here. I have one on me. Oh, that's a fortune one. Oh, that's the new one I just made. That's how I have it set up. So I actually need to make one more silk pick to fill this box up because I broke one while I was digging during my big nether build and I never replaced it. So I'll probably do that after I do my repairs. Anyway, that's that rounds out everything I want to show about enchantment. In our next episode, I'll probably do some more work on the skeleton farm, um, finish digging it out, set up the station where you can actually get XP from it manually. And so it'll be an option for the people that do play on the realm with me to use to do repairs and i'll do a little bit of a tour once that's done so people know how to get to it and how to use it and uh after we get that part set up i'm probably going to work on another project around the jungle house because i don't want to spend too many episodes in a row working on the same thing but i would like to at least get that back to a functional state by the end of this week coming up so i hope you enjoyed watching it i hope maybe you learned something like i said if you have any questions that or something didn't make sense or you think there's something else I should cover, leave me a comment and I'll do my best to do it. But otherwise, I hope you have a good day and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye. One more little secret clip for the end of the video. This fortune pick, I don't need it. Efficiency five, unbreaking three, fortune three, netherite pick. For those few of you that are actually on the, the my realm that watch the video, if you watch all the way to the end and you're the first one to get here, that fortune pick is yours.